Hey guys, what's going on? So yesterday Meta released a new tool which I believe will help many of you tremendously. As you know, testing during mixed reality or VR development has always been a challenge. It has been for me, I'm sure it has been a challenge for many of you as well. And I know that we have the Meta XR Simulator, which helps a lot for fast iteration, but let's be honest, even with those really cool dev tools, we still need to test with physical devices. So Meta is now making that possible by providing us with a new tool, which is called the Immersive Debugger. But first, what is the Immersive Debugger, you might ask, right? Well, the Immersive Debugger is a set of editor and runtime tools that will help you in debugging your applications. This doesn't mean that we're gonna be setting breakpoints, which honestly is what came to mind when mentioning the word debugger when I was reading through the docs, but instead it will help you in exposing inspector variables, methods, and console logs at runtime. The console logs will happen automatically, which is a really cool feature, but this is gonna help us in understanding what's happening behind our apps. Also, this tool is not just for devs. I know its name suggests it, but it requires no coding expertise to be able to use it. So today I will show you both usages, one from a designer standpoint and also one from a developer standpoint. So let's jump into my computer and start working on it. All right guys, so the first thing that I want you to do is open up a project that you want to use to upgrade to V68. In my case, I'm using the productivity app that I created for this channel previously and I'm using V66 in here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and update the all-in-one package you can also install the individual packages that Meta XR Core SDK, which is what includes the immersive debugger. Or you can do what I just did on this video, which is install the all-in-one package, which is available from the Unity Asset Store. Next, once you install it, you're gonna go into the immersive debugger option. You can enable it here. It's going to be, as of this time, experimental, and then check whether you want to have this start on startup. And another cool feature though, is that you can also designate which button to use to basically toggle the immersive debugger, or you can also enable translation and rotation. There's just a lot of different options in here. Also, if you want the panel to be far, or if you want it to be close, and they also have really cool options in here if you wanna show the inspector, the console, also the logs. These are things that we can enable through the actual application when we run this in VR. And then they also have different rendering features and integration features if you want to integrate additional custom logging. So if you go under the Meta XR Core SDK, this is where the code resides. I took a look at it just to understand how things work behind the scenes. So you're more than welcome to test that and check that out. So you can also look at the resource that gets generated, which is basically an scriptable object of the options that we just enable. Then go into build, and it's really important that you enable development build, otherwise the actual immersive debugger is not gonna show. And then just go ahead and deploy it to your device. I already have it connected via USB-C. So I'm gonna show you how it works. So we got the experience running in here. We can toggle it to basically see the immersive debugger. I'm rotating my head so you guys can see that it is following me because we have the translation option enabled. We can disable it and then it should now basically stay in place. We can also change here the opacity of the component. Also enable rotation, which is cool in cases where you wanna move around and make sure that it is pointing in the right direction. I can also enable the actual inspector, which is gonna show you all the different components that are currently tagged or where we added an inspector debugger. These are gonna be the ones that are built in and available by Meta. You can also change how far this is. Remember that we set it to have this option in the actual Unity options. You can also enable the different accesses here. There's kind of like an anchor that shows up for each controller if you were to enable it, which is really helpful, right? We wanna know where the controllers are and just having this information is really cool. I'll show you more about this later on in this video. These two here, the left and the right hand anchor, a really, really cool tool. Like if you wanna see where the anchors are when you're doing and using hand tracking, they also show where they are at all times. Again, this is really helpful depending on what you're trying to build in your own experience. You can also disable pass-through here by using this, which is also really, really helpful if you want to see how your experience will look without pass-through. And you can also change the opacity here as well. 
maybe your experience has to have a different level of opacity, then that option is going to be also available with the immersive debugger. So I'll show you more as we go through some of the options today. All right, guys, so for the next thing, let's go ahead and enable display a startup. I'm also going to set the panel distance to be far and also enable all the different toggles. Then if you go back into the experience, you're gonna see that now we have everything showing right away. We have the console, also the inspector, and then the settings basically mimic what we just enabled through the immersive debugger options. We can also look and see how it reacts to when we have multiple windows open. It just works really well. And I can also bring him close to me and we can also just change it back. Now, if we go back to the actual console and I'm going to start interacting with the application that I built in here. This is basically a simple measuring application. And I know that I have a bug, but I wanna show you how we can fix it and figure it out, right? In this case, I have an issue because the component has basically a text mesh pro and I'm using the transform that parent instead of the set parent, which is an issue. So how do we go about fixing this issue? Well, the immersive debugger told me exactly where it was happening. So I just have to change this from parent to be set parent because I'm dealing with the text mesh pro component. So I just have to do it here as well. And now the code should reflect and not the code, but also the console should now not have that error showing. So what I'm gonna do next though, is add a debug inspector to one of your components. In my case, I'm using this on the take measure, measure tape feature. So if I go down in here, you're gonna see basically all the different members of this class. And in this case, it's the transform. And if I look at the measure tape feature, it's gonna show you exactly what's available within my class. And the cool thing with this though, is that you don't need to be a developer to use this. This could be used by a designer. This could be used basically by anybody that has access to your Unity project. I can enable the parent component and I start basically toggling all of these different members. In my case, I wanna see the rotation and I want to have this in a specific category so that we can see it in the inspector when we run it, right? So I'm gonna add it to the measure tape transform. You can also change the gizmo type. In this case, I'm gonna leave it as known. And then we have rotation position. Let's also add it to the scale. So I'm gonna find the scale here. There we go, the local scale. And I'm also gonna paste the same category. And now we have three of them in here that we can inspect when we run the immersive debugger. You can also search in here for different options and it's really fast. So you want to look for a specific property, a specific field, then this is gonna allow you to search throughout all your components. And then I'm gonna enable the public class measure tape feature. In my case, this is the one that I'm going to be debugging. So what I'm gonna do though, is I want to expose the tape width. And in my case, this is gonna be the minimum value. And I'm gonna show you how cool this is. I can go ahead and enable this and I can also change the color, if I wanted to change the color of what shows on the actual immersive debugger inspector, I can also make it tweakable, which means that we can actually change it with the inspector at runtime, which is really, really powerful. And you're gonna see how we can test our code to do that. So, but this I'm gonna be putting under a different area. So I'm just gonna put it under measure, tape, and perhaps feature as well, so that we have it on a different area. The other one was transform, so now we're gonna have two different categories that we're going to be able to see. So now let's go ahead and see what we have right now. So you're gonna see here, I'm gonna bring this closer. So now we have three different categories. We have the Meta XR, which is the one that we're used to seeing, but we don't see any objects in these categories, right? But I'm gonna show you why, and this is pretty genius from Meta because they don't come to life unless the component is enabled. So in this case, the component is enabled. Now I can see the measure tape transform components. I can also see the measure tape feature. You can see the width, you can see the current controller, previous controller, and basically everything that we enable. So I'm gonna show you here by basically drawing a couple of different lines that we can see what the left controller is, what the right controller is. We can also see that the start buff controllers is set to false. I can also change the width and you're gonna see that this is actually reflecting the new changes on the actual experience. So I didn't have to code these, basically go back to Unity, redeploy everything. I can just test everything 
right in here without having to do that. So it's just really, really cool and really powerful. All right, guys, so I hope you're having a good time. And if you can subscribe and hit the notification bell, that's going to help me a lot with bringing you a lot more videos. In the meantime, we're going to be looking at how we can combine the debug members and also how we can do this through code. First, we're gonna be looking at this other component and going to be enabling the position and the rotation. And we're gonna be doing something similar to what we did before, except that we're going to have a new category, which is going to be called the leveler transform. I'm going to be doing the same thing here with the rotation. And then I'm also going to be calculating how many childs we have, and we don't have to do it through code. We can just look at the property here, which is called the child count. If you enable it, now we can basically expose that. So that was how easy that process was. Then if we go into the leveler feature, in my case, we're going to be also adding another component, which is going to be really cool because we're gonna be able to tweak it. The leveler tolerance is going to allow me to determine at what point I am level versus we're not, when we're not level, meaning that if this is level and the tolerance is you know, between negative 25 and 25, in this case, it's going to be, basically this tool is going to change to green. It's just a basic way of trying to find out if something is level in real life. So what I'm gonna do though is, now that we have this enabled, we can also start getting you know, information about different components. In this case, I want to get the velocity from the rigid body, also the angular velocity, also to determine if it's kinematic. So you can do this with you know, all the built-in components in Unity, it just allows you to basically also expose that information. So now if we go back into the code, it's actually going to be pretty simple. All we have to do is basically add the debug member, also specify what the category is going to be. For anything that I'm doing right now, I'm going to be basically tagging this as menu interaction because I'm dealing with the menu interaction manager. I'm also going to be exposing a private variable. So this is something different that we haven't done before. I can do it on public variables. I can do it on private variables. Privates are really cool though, because these are things that are not exposed. We would have to build UI around it, but by having this functionality, now we can start exposing these through the runtime debug, basically the immerse debugger. Another thing that is also really cool is you can also do this on methods. So in this case, this is gonna be a private method called initialize. I'm also going to be basically restructuring the coding here. I'm going to be adding a new method called a leveler feature. This is so that we can actually create a leveler by using the immerse debugger. So this is a really cool way of doing this. So if I didn't have the UI for this, I could have done this and not having to build any UI around it. So it's gonna go ahead and refactor it. And then now we're gonna be able to basically expose that. I can also do a new method here for clear all tape lines. I don't want to add this to the GUI. I don't want to implement a GUI to be able to do this. Then I'm going to be basically adding a couple of different debug lines which is really powerful because we now can expose that. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a couple of more different debug members in here so you guys can see how powerful this is when we run it. We should now have also an anchor on the actual tape area for each one of the controllers, which we can see it now because I set those to have basically a new gizmo and that's what we did in the code which is really cool you can basically toggle that on and on we can also change the measure info length which is really cool because we can now see that it has an offset i'm calculating the cross product and now i can see the label has a distance and we can test it without having to go back into unity I can also in here add different levelers by using the code because we added the new method. We can also, in this case, if we wanted to clear all the lines, I didn't have any GUI built on top of that, but the tool now allows me to do that because we expose that new method. I can also change all the different tolerances on all the different levelers, which is cool because we can now have a value that is from negative 25 to 25 because that's what I'm telling that immerse debugger to do. I didn't have to code it. All I had to do was expose 
the functionality. And then lastly, we can also look at the debug log entries that are now showing correctly on the actual console. And the last thing that I wanted to show you though, is you can also use the Immerse Debugger with the Meta XR Simulator. I think that just gives you another option for debugging your applications that are built on top of the Meta SDK. All right guys, I hope you enjoy this video. Also, let me know what you think about the Immersive Debugger below. I'm really curious about your feedback. And also don't forget to hit the notification bell and subscribe because it's gonna help me as always to bring you many more videos. And thank you very much to all my patrons for supporting me. I appreciate it and happy XR coding everyone. Hey guys. Hey guys, what's going on? So, hey guys, what's going on? So, as you know, testing during, as you know. <laughs>